So this morning we are carrying on uh, or pretty much helping you pick from, you know, the week of fasting. Uh, and we've been talking about hearing God's voice. And I just feel like I'm going to do a summary of that week. But I also feel like God has something to say to us because there's been a lot of videos that have gone out, amazing content. I have benefited from those videos. And I also don't want to try and, and say everything that those videos said. But this morning, I feel like God has something for us to hear. And the topic of this, uh, or what I'm talking about this morning, is hearing from God. So I want you to pause uh, whatever you're doing right now and just listen to what God has to say for you. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And as Paul encouraged Timothy and he said, give yourself to the public reading of Scripture. I'm going to read a very long uh, piece or, or, or chapter going to read from the ESV. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call you, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, and the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling us other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to the end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel was afraid to tell the, vis the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me 
of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. I mean, we could actually close the service <laughs> and go home. So we, we want to concentrate on this line, hearing God. And when you read the Bible, sometimes you come to these details that you feel like, I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> Why did they put it there? But I had a statement said some time back that there is no unnecessary detail in the word of God. In fact, it says there is not even an iota of God's word that will go unfulfilled. That's the words of Jesus. So when you meet details like Samuel was lying in the temple of God in the wee hours of the morning, it is not unnecessary detail. When you meet detail like he was ministering to the Lord, it's not unnecessary detail. Or for example, when you meet detail like Hannah was praying for a child for so many years, you would think that that's a domestic case that should be left at home. But then when later we read through the Bible, we find that it had all this global impact. The prayer of a woman for a child became the answer to a nation's prayer. And the detail that we are told is they were, there was no word of God. There were no visions at that time. And a woman somewhere was praying for just a child. Just give me a child, Lord. And God was answering a greater, greater need of the nations. So, quick point there. There is no unnecessary detail in the word of God. And that's why we should never ignore the importance of hearing God's voice. In the wider context of what we're talking about today, which is 1 Samuel chapter 3, we see that before that was a period of the judges. It was this up and down period where people would sin against God, he would punish them, and then he would raise a judge to, to try and help them come back to God. So the judge would be this guy who brings them back to God, who reminds them of what God said and brings them back to God. And then after a few years, maybe a few months, I don't know, they would go back to sinning against God. Then God would take them to the cycle of punishing them. Then he would raise a judge for them who would bring them back to God. And then the cycle would go on and on. But when we come to this time of Samuel, we find that there was an old man called Eli who was holding the reins of the temple at that time, but he had grown very cold to the things of God. He had heard the voice of God so many times, but we are told that he had ignored the voice of God. His sons who would serve with him, Hophni and Phineas, they were busy going against the law of God, sleeping with women in the temple courts, taking the sacrifices that were God's and using it for their own personal gains. And God had spoken to this man so many times to correct that, but he had not listened. And I want to pause and say, friends, when God is speaking, and let me go back to this statement, God is always speaking. God is always speaking. The, the problem is that not all of us listen. So God's been speaking to Eli for a long time, but Eli was ignoring the voice of God. 
And then God raises someone who would be listening. And friends, because God's voice is always present, when we ignore God's voice, he is not obliged to only speak to us. He will use people around us, and he will speak to those people. Matter of fact, if you hear somebody come to tell you something that God has spoken to them about you, most of the time, I'm not saying all the time, most of the time, it's that you are not listening. So he needed to tell someone else to come and tell you. I always say, and I always believe, that if God sends someone to me, it should be more of a confirmation of what he has already spoken to me and he's saying to me. So I want to go to a few points and just bring you to understand what's happening here and how it is relevant for us in hearing God's voice. The first question I want to ask is, who am I listening to? Why? Because God is always speaking, but who am I listening to? You know, I listen to many things. I listen to music. I turn on the YouTube sometimes, and I watch and I listen to the news, maybe BBC, maybe CNN. I want to know what's happening around. When I look, or if I was to judge what I'm listening to every day, there is probably one voice that I hear most and convinces me of how I should act. It could be the voice of social media. When they talk to me or when I look, sometimes when I look at Facebook or Instagram, I turn it off very fast because I think to myself, I have this pressure, or oh, should I post something? Oh, should I do something about this? Or, oh, you know, when's the next time I take a great picture so that I can post it? So there's a voice that is speaking to me and informing how I should act. Samuel's story is a reminder to us that God is always speaking. But it's also a reminder to us that God wants us to know him, and that's why he talks to us. He wouldn't bother to talk to us if he didn't want us to know him. God wants us to know him, and that's why he gives us his voice. Over and over, you will realize that the voice that you listen to more and more shapes the person you are and are becoming. For example, we shape the speech patterns and the behavioral responses of our children by what we say to them and how we talk to them. Our children tend to grow and say the things that we say, how we say them, because they're influenced, because they see us and they feel that's how it should be. Friends, God wants me to know him, but he does not want me to stop there. God wants to speak to me personally. And then God wants to direct me or to speak to me specifically. I'll say those three things again. God wants me to know him. And that's why he comes and the Bible says, Samuel had not yet known the Lord. For me to know God, God has to reveal himself to me. And so he comes close to me. And how does he do that? He comes with his voice. He speaks to me. And when I hear him, I begin to know him. The Bible says in John 10, my sheep know my voice and they hear me and they follow me. So my sheep not only know my voice, but now they know me because of my voice. God wants me to know him. God wants me to know him personally. And God wants to speak to me and direct me specifically. I personally think that God speaks when it is most important to us. I'll say that again. God speaks when it is most important for us. God will not use any unfamiliar way of speech until he has used the most familiar. I personally think that by the time God uses an earthquake to get your attention, it's probably because you had closed out on the voice of God, that still small voice. Because we're told, yes, that the earth speaks 
or God speaks through creation. By the time he's using creation to get my attention, maybe I am not listening to that still small voice. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. So God always speaks up to us specifically. He wants us to know his plan. But when we are not listening, he would use an event or he can even use pain in our lives to get our attention. I never want to get to that place. So quick question. How do we hear God's voice? I have four keys that I'm using in this. And pick it from Samuel. How do we hear God's voice? For me, hearing God's voice has been the most fulfilling experience of my walk with Jesus. In fact, I am standing here today because of the word of God. I could walk you through it. I could tell you every detail of this. In fact, if today God would tell me, Tobias, pull out and go, I would actually pull out and go. Because that's the voice of God. The voice of God requires us to adventure with him, to go where he sends us to go, to do what he asks us to do. So here are four keys that we can pick from this passage. Number one is, who does God speak to? Who does God speak to? We're told that God came to Samuel, who was in the temple at that time, and Josephus, who is a historian, a Jewish historian, writes and predicts that probably he was about 11 or 12 years. And that should encourage anyone watching this today, because God can come to that level of a child and speak to a child. And so for those of you who have children, do not ignore that God could be speaking to your children. And God can speak to the oldest amongst us. God speaks to everyone. But who does God speak to? From this, we see God speaks to those who are childlike in their faith. Not childish, but childlike. <clears throat> in fact, the word of God says that the kingdom of God is received by those who are childlike. There's something about being childlike. Is that we still have the wonder. We're still caught up in the wonder of God. We're still caught up in the amazement of how great and wonderful God is. We still get open to the possibilities of what God can do. We still believe there is a God as children. But as we grow old, something happens in our soul and in our hearts. It's that we grow older. As we grow old, we become pessimistic and cynical. And all of a sudden, we begin to tell you how that cannot happen because it never happened to me, so it shouldn't happen to you. We begin to block the ways of God by saying it no longer happens in our days. We no longer pause to see that God remains the same. It's us drifting away and far away from him. So who does God speak to? He speaks to those who are childlike. <clears throat> Samuel was so innocent and so vulnerable that he goes to Eli and says, did you call me? Says, I did not call you. And he is so innocent and so vulnerable that he goes three times. Like an adult would be like, ah, oh, man, <laughs> What is going on with me? You know, am I, am I having, you know, a mental breakdown? Maybe I should sleep. Let me go get coffee, you know. But a child, I hear the voice. Did you call me dad? Did you call me mom? Listen to what John Max Templeton said. You are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your self-confidence as old as your fears, as young as your hope, as old as your despair, 
So long as your heart receives the messages of beauty, cheer, courage, grandeur, and the power from God, so long are you young. But when the wires are all down, all the central part of your heart is covered with the snow of pessimism and the ice of cynicism, then you have grown old indeed. And may God have mercy on your soul. And I read that again. <clears throat> you are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your self-confidence, as old as your fears, as young as your hope, as old as your despair, so long as your heart receives the messages of beauty, cheer, courage, grandeur, and the power from God, so long are you young. But when the wires are down, all the central parts of your heart is covered with the snow of pessimism and the eyes of cynicism. Then you have grown old indeed, and may God have mercy on your soul. So who does God speak to? Those who are childlike, not childish. So when does God speak? Point number two, or key number two. When does God speak to Samuel? It's very important for us to know when does God speak to us. The Bible says in verse one of First Samuel, let me just read it again. It says, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. Wordings are very important. Now, if you read NIV, it says he was ministering before the Lord. But I like the ESV and KJV because use these words. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord, which is very different from ministering for the Lord. I mean, it's not wrong to minister for the Lord like singing and preaching like I'm doing right now. But there's just something about when we are isolated, we are in the closet with God, and I am ministering to the Lord, and that there's no crowd around me, so I do not have to be anything different from what I am before the Lord. I'm just ministering to the Lord. There are parallel words that are spoken in Acts chapter 13, and I think it's verse 2. It says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, separate to me Paul and Barnabas for the work whereto I have called them. They were ministering to the Lord. When does God speak to us? Most of the time is when we come to that place where we close out everything around us and minister to the Lord in worship, in prayer, in contemplation, in fasting, whatever you want to do, but just it's to the Lord. It's to the Lord. That's when God speaks to us. Now, that's also to say God speaks to us all the time, but one of those places that he speaks most is when we stop everything around us and concentrate and ask God to speak to us. I want to say these words to you. God wants me, God wants to speak to me, to speak to me everywhere, but also God wants me to put, to find a place and a time for him. Mm. Now I hear your people say, I'll be in the tube or I'd be in the bus seated and God would speak to me. And I said, that's great. If God does that to you, that's great. I still believe God wants us to, to come up the mountain uh, uh, symbolically and to take a time, to set a time and a place where I can meet with him and I can shut everything and ask God speak to me. Tell me what you're seeing. <clears throat> so God speaks to those who are childlike. He speaks to us when we are ministering to him. And key number three, where does God speak to Samuel? It's important. Where does God speak to Samuel? It says Samuel was in the temple at that time. Now, 
Did he have a separate room that he could sleep in? I believe there was. It, and I can see that Eli had a room for himself, so he would run to Eli. But there's something about this, and I can see the Bible does not put any unnecessary detail, that it was just about the time in the morning before the dawn uh, checks in, before the light checks in, and the light of God's lamp had not yet gone out. And that means it's like three in the morning. Samuel is sleeping in the temple right next to the ark of God. Of course, you would say that's an Old Testament way of looking at it. But God speaks to Samuel while he is in the temple. It would interest you to know that Samuel is not of the tribe of priests. It would be Hophni and Phineas who would be rightfully sit, seated next to the, the Ark of God's covenant. But this is somebody who God has just brought in and allows him to be in his presence in the temple and he speaks to him. But I also want to tell you, this is beautiful, that we are collectively, we are collectively the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God speaks to us, and I know God speaks to me while I'm at home, but many times God has spoken to me when I am together with brothers and sisters, the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the building, I'm talking about the gathering of brothers and sisters. When we are together, he has spoken to me. He has spoken to me about people. You see, when I'm at home, it's hard that sometimes I, he tells me about people because I can't see them most of the time. But when I see people, sometimes it drops a thought in my mind and I ask a question and it leads to one thing to another and it becomes a wisdom of God for that particular person to what God was asking them to do. God speaks to us in the temple. So why, why am I stressing this? I want to encourage you to prioritize the gathering of God's people, to prioritize that is part of how God speaks to us. He uses that temple experience to speak to us. Number four, let's finish this. Why does God speak to us? Or why did God speak to Samuel? It's a good, good question. Why? It's because Samuel was responsive. Now, it says Samuel is lying in the temple. It's late in the night or, or early in the morning. And the voice comes to him, Samuel, Samuel. And he wakes up or rises from bed, calls to Eli and says, did you call me? No, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. And he's called the second time. He rushes back to Eli, said the same thing. He said, go back. And the third time. See, many of us, when God is speaking to us, we sometimes tend to think it's probably the coffee that I had last night that's making me not have good dreams. I can't sleep right now. Or it's... It's the, the conversation I had with my boss that was not pleasant. And so I'm, not, I'm, I'm having a hard time sleeping, you know. How did it say that when, when, you, when he wakes you up in the night, don't count the sheep, talk to the shepherd. All right. So in, in the middle of the night, God, and there are seasons in my life, I've seen this so many times, that he would speak to me in the night. And he would give me... I may not say God gives me, but he, I would find myself in a rough part of the night, which I cannot sleep. Why am I having difficulty sleeping? And I'm like, I want to take a pill. I don't have a pill right now. If I had a pill, I probably would get a pill and get myself to sleep. But then he, he's trying to get my attention, and quickly it would dawn to me that God wants my attention. I would step out of bed and I go maybe to my uh, sitting room area, and I say, God, I'm here. What do you want to tell me? And I'll get the Bible. I'm just scrambling for anything that would say, God, say something to me. And I'll pick the Bible, and I'll read it, And because I, I want to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. Friends, be responsive. Do something when God tells you or calls you. Don't just say, I don't think that's God. 
Do something about it. Be responsive. But don't just be responsive. Be faithful to do what he tells you to do. This is where you actually tell it's the word of God or God is speaking to you. Because when Eli wakes up and says, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel says, here I am. Please tell me what he told you. I want you to see something here. Tell me what he told you. Guess what? It was the worst message you could give your friend. It was a judgment message. It was God literally judging Eli. And how do I tell him? I'm a young man. I'm 12. What do I do? This is not the thing that I normally do as a 12-year-old. I can't tell you that. Is a, one of your British uh, prophets, I think it's called Tommy Arayomi. <clears throat> I've listened to him a couple of times. But he shares a point when he started to hear God. And he says he was in a car while they were driving, him and his brother and mother and the father in the front. And there was an accident about to happen. And I think he goes into some form of trance and shouts, stop the car. I'm not... Maybe I'm not giving the exact detail of what he said, but he just says, stop the car. And his dad steps on the brakes. And immediately a car goes and there's like an accident, a crazy accident happens right in front of them. That if his dad never stepped on the brakes, they would be part of that accident. And the dad turns to him and says, how did you know? He says, I don't know. I just, I just heard a voice telling me stop and I shouted. Stop the car. Friends, there's something about being faithful to say the things we feel. Some people tell me, but what if I get it wrong? Well, then you will know that that's not the voice of God. You know, we, 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 we put heavy weights on ourselves thinking, oh, if I tell him that I'm, I'm hearing this and that they will think of me as a weird person and I, they don't want to hang out with me. The best thing to say is, I'm very sorry. I probably had it wrong. Be gracious to yourself, but also be faithful to what you had. The only way you grow is by doing it. By reason of use, we perfect a gift. And we use it over and over. Then I know that's the voice of God. I've, come, I've grown closer to hearing God's voice. I'm not saying I'm the perfect one. But I could tell you when it's the Lord and when it's me telling myself stuff I should do. <laughs> and I quickly tell myself, Tobias, you're lying to yourself. When it's not, it's just me telling myself things. But there's something I want to finish with is what the Bible says, the Lord came to him again. The Lord came to him again. The beautiful part about that is when God speaks to us, God does not like doubt, but he does not mind clarifying. So he will always come to us over and over because he doesn't want us to get it wrong. God is not the kind of God who wants you to get it wrong so that he sits there and says, you see, you got it wrong. Uh, now you need to go back and listen. No, he wants to say it. That's why discernment is needed. That's why you need to stay there and say, God, is it? You I'm hearing. If it's you I'm hearing, would you even use another way so that I can get it? I've many times said, God, use a sign. Give me a sign if that's necessary. Mm. Let me finish with this. When I was dating my wife, and I just did not know that she would be the one that I would marry, <laughs> I told God, please speak to me. But don't speak to me. Speak to someone else to come and tell me that you're, you know, God had already spoken to me about her, but I remember one time I wake up in the morning and God says this word clearly, clearly said, today Dr. Emily, as one of my classmates, Dr. Emily will tell you something. That was the only words he said to me. And I went on, we were in class to, to, to the very end of the class, and Dr. Emily was driving home and she, she was giving me a lift to the church I was serving in. And as we drove, parked at her gate, I walked out to try and walk to the church, and I walked like 50 meters away, and she calls me, Tobias, Tobias, I have something to tell you. And immediately, 
I remember the words in the morning that the Lord spoke to me. It was clearly the Lord. And I turn, I go back to the car and she says, Tobias, I've been praying. That girl is going to be your wife. Just like that. <laughs> and I, I knew that God has spoken. God did not say, Joyce is going to be my wife in the morning. He says, Dr. Emily is going to tell you something. And I had forgotten about it. I'm going, then I remember, this is what God had told me. You would tell me something. And she said it. And for me, it was a confirmation of something. I already started feeling that God was saying she would be. But I needed someone else to say it. And God will come to you again and again to confirm his word. So do not quit on hearing God's voice. God will come to you again and again until you get it. Let me give you, uh, let me finish with this. Listen to this. Just the last part of that chapter, it says, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. Friends, we will mature in the voice of God as we continually come and tell him, speak, speak, speak. And as we get to know his voice, we get to know him more and more. And we, we grow into a place where we do not confuse it for other voices. So I want to encourage you who, you who is watching today, please lean in on God. Lean in on God's voice. In fact, as I was preparing this, the words that came to my spirit were dialed in, dialed in. Let me read for you the meaning of that. It's dialed in. It means to direct all your effort and attention to what you're trying to achieve. So you perform as well as you can. So, Direct all your efforts to hearing God's voice, and God is willing to speak to you. Shall we pray? Mm. Father, we thank you that you want to come to us. You want us to know you. And so you come to us through your voice. You want us to hear you specifically, Lord. You want us to know your intention for our lives. Father, you have not made us walk or do many things to try and reach you. You're the one who, oh God, in actual sense, has come to us. So today as you've been watching this, God is speaking to you. God has come to you. He wants to talk to you. As we prayed for this, uh, and, and prepared for this. And just God gave me a vision of a man who walked right into the door and he had these red eyes. And the words that followed immediately when that vision came was red hot anger. And for some of you, that's been the barrier between God's words at reaching your heart. You still carry this anger for some reason. And God is inviting you to give away, give up that anger, give it to him that he can give you his life and his peace again. Then you can begin to hear his voice and respond to his voice. In matter of fact, he's speaking to you this morning. Lay down that anger burden to him and pick up his peace and joy and direction for your life. Father, we thank you for loving us. Speak to us this week, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.